In my review of the LK Chen longsword, I demonstrated the two different ways to draw it that I figured out. Now I have found another way. There's a famous landmark that is an archaeological site of a tomb of a general that was unearthed in China, and it is currently the most well-preserved archaeological stone carvings of a Han Dynasty relief art that currently exists in the world. And in it, there are some very high fidelity figurines uh, that were carved that provides tantalizing clues to how we can handle the sword. Within it, you can see that the figures depicted were probably friends of the master of the tomb. They all have separate nameplates, also include the nameplate of a dog. So I'm sure they love their pet very much uh, back in Han Dynasty. Some of the figures had their sword sheathed and in a very polite posture, and some of them seemed to be in ready for battle, where they would stand in this guardian-like stance. And the stance is not unfamiliar to most Chinese people because it is a commonly seen figure in a lot of you know, the culture depictions, even after Han Dynasty. There weren't that many figures that seemed to be welding the two-handed sword. There was only one. And it's not clear if it, they were welding a poem or a sword because it seems to me that I can see the evidence of a sword still sitting in his belt. But I don't know. What do you think? They hold their sword across in front of them in a very curious like stance. I didn't think it made sense that they would touch the exposed blade with their front hand because the blade is pretty sharp. Upon closer inspection though, I realized that they were holding the scabbard and in one instance, a figure actually was half drawing their sword from the scabbard. And that's when I realized this is a sword drawing posture for the long sword that they're carrying. Let's recreate this properly. So this is a Ming Dynasty uh, Dao Pao or a gentry's robe. During the Han Dynasty, the gentries also wore something very similar and uh, the exact format hasn't changed that much. So I think this is pretty close, so bear with me. In this case, you can see from the picture that they've tucked in the bottom of the rope into the back of their belt. And also what happened is that there is a separate strap. Uh, well, at least I think there's a separate strap system where they're able to keep the long sleeves in check. So you can tell from the picture with the long flaring sleeves, I believe that's when we're moving and there are flaring of the sleeves in this direction. Also, with the strap system, I move the knot in the back like this. So in front, you can see that there is these two separate straps that are quite stylized in the carvings. In the picture, they're able to move the sword in front of them and hang like this in order to have this very fearsome look in their eyes, right? And the sword really rests comfortably uh, in front of you like this. And you have to see that, well, their hand is pushing out like this. And why do they do that? And I tried a bunch of things and I realized that it is a convenient way to draw the sword. I'll show you. Here, I move my scabbard towards the back. I draw it out in front of me. And what does this look like? What about things like this? What about movements like this? So it seems to me that this movement of standing, push the scabbard forward and drawing the sword backwards, is preserved within the modern Chinese sword forms. I hope you found that this is interesting. Thanks for watching.